Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to look at perpendicular and parallel lines. So let's start with parallel. Parallel lines are like railway lines. They are always the same distance apart. Please note that they do not have to have the same length, they just have to be the same distance apart. So they are things like this, that, like that, as long as they run along each other like that, that is called parallel. So something important takes place with parallel lines. We can say that their gradients or their gradients are equal. Because remember, gradient tells you how steep a line is. And so, for example, if I look at these two lines, they have the same steepness. So that's the important thing to learn from this lesson, is that parallel lines have the same gradient. So if I had to look at these two equations, they are already written in standard form, and so the gradient of the top line is 2. Remember, we learned this in the last lesson, that the number in front of the x is the gradient, and this gradient over here is also 2. And so these two lines have the same gradient. So on a graph, it would look like this. This one has a y-intercept of 8, so I'll draw it somewhere up here. And then its gradient is a positive 2, so it would look something like this. Then this one at the bottom has a y-intercept of negative 2, which is somewhere over here. But it also has a gradient of 2, so it will look something like that. It's meant to go through this point. So what we can see is that the two lines look like railway lines, they are parallel. So guys, just remember that, parallel, same gradient. Parallel, same gradient. These two lines do not have the same gradient. But Kevin, they both have an 8 in front of the x. Yes, but the top line is not written in standard form. Standard form is when the y is by itself. So to get it into standard form, you would first have to divide everything by 4. And then all of a sudden, these cancel out, and you end up with y equals 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And so this line over here only has a gradient of 2. Because the gradient, you can only find the gradient once you have written your equation in standard form. That is so important, guys. It must be written in standard form first. This one's gradient is 8 because it's already written in standard form. All right, so now we're going to practice a few questions. So here's number one. Line one is given to us like this. Line two is given to us like this. And the question is, are they parallel? Now, some of you watching might say no straight away because these two numbers are different. But then some of you would realize that this bottom equation is not written in standard form. The reason for that is that the y still has a two in front of it. So the correct thing is to get y by itself first. So I will divide everything by 2, and so we end up with y equals 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so all of a sudden we can see that this line actually has a gradient of 3, which is the same as this one, and so yes, these lines are parallel. Here's the next question, number 2. So line number 2 is already in standard form because it's got the y by itself, but line number 1 is not. So let's first change this one by dividing everything by 2. And so that's going to leave us with y minus 2x equals to 4. And we need to get the y by itself. So this part over here needs to move to the other side. And so we're going to end up with y equals to 4 plus 2x. Now that both lines are in standard form, we can compare them. So for this one over here, the number in front of the x is a 2. And for this one, the number in front of the x is also a 2. And so once again, these lines are parallel. You see, guys, so all you need to do is get the lines into standard form and then look at the numbers in front of the x. If they're the same, parallel. If they're not the same, then they're not parallel. I said I was going to talk about perpendicular lines, but I'm going to push that forward to the next lesson. In this lesson, we're just going to practice parallel. Okay, here's the next one. Are these two lines parallel? Well, first step is to get them in standard form. We can't say anything until we've done that. So this minus 4x needs to move over to the right where it becomes positive. 
this positive 2x needs to move over to the right where it will become a negative 3 minus 2x. Now we can compare them. So for the top one, the number in the front of the x is a 4. For the bottom one, the number in front of the x is a minus 2. They are different, and so these two lines are not parallel. They would look something like this. See, they cross over each other. They're not parallel. Here's the, in the next two lines, so let's see if they are parallel. Step one is to get them into standard form first. So I'm going to move this positive 6x over, so it'll give us 2y equals to 8 minus 6x. We will then divide everything by 2, and so we'd end up with y equals to 8 divided by 2, which is 4, minus 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. We're then going to get the bottom equation into standard form. So it almost is in standard form. We just need to get rid of that 3. And so that would cancel. And so we'd end up with y equals 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So let's compare. At the top, the number in front of the x is a minus 3. At the bottom one, the number in front of x is a positive 3. So they are not the same. And so these are not parallel. Here's another two. So this line at the top is almost in standard form. We just need to take this 2x to the other side where it will become negative. For the equation at the bottom, we need to take the 6x over. We then need to divide everything by 2. And so those would cancel. And so you end up with y equals to negative 3x plus 4. So for the top equation, the number in front of the x is a minus 2. For the bottom equation, it's a minus 3. So these two lines are not parallel. So with these two, we for the top line, you would need to first move the 6x over. So we're going to end up with 3y equals to 9 plus 6x. You would then have to divide everything by 3 so that you could get y completely by itself. And so y would be equal to 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. The bottom equation is nearly in standard form. You just need to divide everything by 12. Why? Just in order to get the y value by itself. 24 divided by 5 is, I mean, 12 is 2. 36 divided by 12 is 3. Now we can compare. So in the top equation, the number in front of the x is a 2. And in the bottom equation, the number in front of x is also a 2. So these two are parallel. They have the same gradient. Moving on to the next one. So these will, this will be the last one that we're going to do. So we need to get them into standard form. So we need to move this minus 8 over. So that's going to be 16y equals to 12 plus 8x. We then need to divide everything by 16. Now don't worry if there are weird fractions. That does happen. So we're going to end up with y equals to 12 over 16. If you type that on the calculator, that's 3 over 4. 8 over 16 will give you a half. In the bottom equation, we need to get y by itself. So we're going to move this 3x over. So that's going to give us 9y equals to 7 minus 3x. We will then divide everything by 9. And so that will give us y equals to 7 over 9. 3 divided by 9, if you type that in on the calculator, you get negative a third. So now we can look at them. At the top equation, the gradient is a half. And if you look at the bottom one, the gradient is negative a third. And so these two lines are not parallel.